Hey, it's Richard of Matthews Wealth Management. Uh, today we're going to be talking about inflation on uh, financial calculators and how to calculate what inflation looks like uh, historically as well as into the future. So if you haven't watched our video already about using a financial calculator and purchasing one, go back and check that out. But uh, we're going to input a very common uh, calculation in financial planning where we look at future cost of living or, or just inflation in general. So uh, historically what I want to do is go back and take a look at the U.S. postage uh, rates and the stamp uh, specifically. So we're going to look at a letter in the first ounce for a letter. And uh, if we go all the way back to uh, March 2nd, so 3-2 of 1974, you can see that it was 10 cents. So 0, 0.10 is going to be what we're going to look at as our present value if we rewind back to 1974. And if we go to just last year in 2019, we saw it jump all the way to 0 0.55. So 55 cents is now what it costs to send that first ounce uh, of letter. So we're gonna look at that as the future value, even though that's today, we're trying to calculate the historic inflation rate or interest rate uh, to go from 10 cents to 55 cents, all right? So from 1974, we now need to calculate how long this time frame is to 2019, we can say 45 years, and that's gonna be our number of periods to start calculating uh, what this inflation rate or interest rate is. And uh, the other thing that we know is, is there a payment that is going to compound into this calculation? And the answer there is no. So we're gonna have zero there. So the question we're trying to solve is what is our interest rate, which would be our inflation? So over here, when we're gonna calculate, use the calculator to, uh, to arrive at our, our answer, we're going to say that our present value is 0 0.1. And then something that's a little bit different here, when we're looking at long-term uh, future growth, there's a, a factor that you need to get a little bit more familiar with inside of financial calculators, but we won't dive into that here. We're gonna do 0 0.55 change sign and that's going to turn it effectively into a negative 0.55 and that will be our future value all right four or five is going to be our number of periods so four or five in payment so we're going to hit zero and then p m t and then we will just hit i to figure out what our actual interest rate is so i'm going to do that here on our Apple phone with a, uh, a free app that we're using that you can download. So we go 0 0.1 present value, 0 0.55 change sign future value, 45 in for number of periods, zero payment, and then what is our interest rate? And our interest rate here comes out to three point eight six percent so that's year-over-year -year inflation from the US Post Postal Service that we can use when we're looking at calculating future interest um, or future inflation when it comes to projecting uh, expenses in retirement and, and whatever it is that we need to be pricing down the road it could be real estate etc so we're gonna come back and use this three point eight six percent inflation to look back at what's happened since 1974 to current and try to see what we're gonna look back to 2020 to see in terms of today's numbers uh, compared to the future. So we're gonna wipe down the board and come right back. All right, now in this segment, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover how that 3.86% inflation rate that we've seen historically in the price of, of postage over the years since 74 is gonna project out into the future. So I wanna go with something that would kind of make sense to a lot of clients. Um, and we're gonna use an example of somebody that makes $100,000 of income today. You know, they're able to save, pay taxes, tithe, uh, you know, other forms of giving, and then also spend and expenses their normal lifestyle on that $100,000 of income. So if we fast forward and we're looking at projections into retirement or towards retirement of how, how much do we need to be factoring on income down the road, we're gonna use that same inflation rate to see what $100,000 looks like 
down the road in the future. So right now we're going to say 100,000 and that's going to be our present value. Let me jump in here and just say our 3.86%. That is obviously going to be our interest rate because that was our inflation rate. So uh, we're solving for future value. And then we say, what is the number of periods? And here I'm just going to hypothetically say, let's, let's look 25 years down the road. Our last example, we did 45 years in history. Well, let's just say we're gonna look at 25 years from now. So if somebody retires at 65, that's a pretty normal uh, 90 year uh, time horizon that we would be planning. And um, payment, well, we're not gonna add anything to this, just like our inflation. Uh, payment is gonna be zero. So we need to solve for the future value of what is $100,000 25 years from now using 3.86% inflation, okay? So first thing we're gonna jump into is we're gonna say one zero 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 zero, and that's PV, present value. Then we're gonna say 3.8, six I for our interest rate, two five in for number of periods that we're gonna inflate this amount, and then zero payment. Then we will hit future value, and we will see what $100,000 looks like 25 years from now with historical inflation rates. So I'm gonna use the, uh, the Apple phone here again and our free app. Uh, that you can follow along on. So one zero 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 is our present value. Then we're going to use our 3.86 interest rate. And we're going to do this for 25 years. We're not putting any more payments into it. So then we hit future value and we can see now that our future value of our $100,000 in today's income is going to be two hundred fifty seven thousand seven hundred fifty five dollars and fifty one cents so that is a very sizable gain for the same lifestyle that you would have today at a hundred thousand it's going to take almost two hundred and sixty thousand uh, 25 years from now so what this is useful for is trying to project out expenses into retirement down the road um, on a historical accurate inflation rate to see exactly how much we have to withdraw from social security or pensions or from IRAs to make sure that we can have the same lifestyle that we're estimating and looking forward to in our goal planning uh, down the road. So whether we're using 3% inflation or 4% inflation or 3.86, it makes a very large difference. So when we're doing financial planning on uh, a long-term projection for retirement planning, a great example, um, it's important to factor in how much of this growth is actually going to be in your returns. So we, what we talk about is a tax adjusted, inflation adjusted rate of return when we're building out how to allocate a portfolio. So when we're saying inflation, it is a very crucial part of financial planning to have an accurate inflation number because you can see this, this gets to be a big, a big number down the road on how do we actually uh, plan our withdrawals. So we're gonna do a couple of more of these uh, uh, financial calculator series here, but uh, stay tuned for the next one and uh, reach out if you have any questions.